Here's a cute little digital clock from the 1970s. It perhaps doesn't look super interesting when the power is off, but when I plug it in, you can see that nice neon display light up. This is a Panaplex style display, although it is not a Panaplex branded display. On the back here are all the controls. If you slide this switch to time, you can then slide the switch to either hours or minutes to increment either one of those. You can see the PM indicator there, or it can be the AM indicator if you want. It doesn't really matter. It all depends on your preference. It can be fairly slow to set if you're near the top of the hour. The alarm sets the same way as the clock. You just slide the switch all the way over. You can uh, increment that. And then when you slide it back to the middle position, you'll see the top colon blinking there. When you slide the alarm switch here to the on position, the second dot in the colon lights up. The last control on the back here is the brightness control. As you can see it can be dimmed way down or cranked uh, pretty far up. Quite a bit brighter than any of the LEDs available at the time. I'm not sure why they didn't do uh, automatic brightness control on this one. That would have been a nice feature. You can see the serial number there, 5009, and it claims a power draw of 5 watts. I'm measuring 3.2 here. So it's not really power hungry by any means. Even with the brightness cranked up all the way, the uh, power draw actually did not increase that much. It went up maybe 0.2 watts. There it is at the minimum. And uh, still 3.3 watts. So interestingly, it doesn't really have an effect on the power draw. Of course, you don't want to push the display too hard since these uh, neon displays have a limited life. The display is not actually fading in and out. That's a weird trick of the shutter speed of the camera and the frequency that the display is being multiplexed at. I'm going to unplug the clock right now just for uh, my ease of setting up the alarm. So I'll set the time to uh, 2.01 and I will set the alarm to, we'll say, 2.02. Take it out of set mode. So the time is 2.01. And I'll move the alarm switch to the on position. You can see both colons are lit up. So the alarm is active. And now I'll wait one minute for the alarm to go off. So there goes that obnoxious alarm. Now this thing has an unusual feature where the snooze is activated by tilting the clock. You can see that the colon continues to uh, dance up and down there. That indicates that the alarm is still active and it'll go off again once the snooze time is uh, over. I believe it's nine minutes. I'm not going to wait until it goes off again though. When you switch that alarm switch to the off position, it returns to just blinking that top uh, colon there. Oddly enough, if you turn the alarm back on immediately, it kind of jumps right back into that uh, snooze mode. You'll notice that holding it tilted down brings it back to just blinking that upper uh, colon. Now I'm going to show you guys the inside of this clock. To take it apart, you have to remove these two screws and then kind of pry the back off. So the two screws are out. That holds the cord clamp in place. 
Now I'm going to pry that back cover off with a flathead screwdriver. You have to be a bit careful in prying off the back cover because you don't want to snap off the brightness control or damage any of the switches. And also be aware that the speaker is tucked into a little pocket on the back here. It does slide out of there so you can fully remove the back cover. You can see why it sounds kind of awful. It's got a aluminum cone. It's just a very cheap little thing. Now you can slide the whole assembly out and get a good look at it. You'll notice that there's no power transformer in here and there's this dropping resistor which is probably pretty hot so I'm not going to touch it along with this voltage regulator here. So it is a uh, hot chassis design. The date there, 125-2019, was when I changed the capacitors out in this thing. You can see there's not all that much in here. I was kind of surprised to see the clock chip socketed. Especially on a clock that seems to have been fairly inexpensive. But perhaps that reduced the number of clock chips destroyed during production. And that would have been an expensive part at the time. There's that Panaplex display in the back there. You can see it has no markings on it. And of course that cool mercury switch. You don't see those in consumer electronics anymore. It should have a nearly unlimited life because although that mercury blob moves around it's not really a moving part. The Panaflex display is also socketed and that's because you don't really want to solder to those types of uh, vapor deposited connections. Normally I don't show you guys the bottom of a circuit board but in this case it's actually kind of interesting this clock chip and uh, display are really designed to be used together. Look at the way the traces all route to the display. They laid them out so that no uh, jumper wires are needed, or almost none. I see one jumper there. You can see that this clock board could have been used in a place that has uh, 50 hertz electricity just by removing that link there. Now I actually picked up a second one of these later on. As it goes sometimes I paid a pretty high price for the first one of these that I bought and then I saw one of these with a cheap buy it now and I uh, couldn't resist. I guess I can trade this to somebody else for a different clock I don't have or something. We'll see. I also replaced the caps in this one. It's serial number 5114. This other one was 5009. I don't know how rare these clocks are. But you can see those serial numbers are pretty close together. I'm not going to fully demonstrate this one, I'm just going to plug it in and the alarm will go off because I have it set to on and it'll be at the same time as the uh, display time. So it snoozes just like the other one and the alarm turns off just fine and you can set it so everything works. These are pretty cool clocks in my opinion. Thanks for watching.